With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Christensen, pharmacist. Uh, thanks so much for listening today, and I hope you uh, pick up some practice pearls. I do want to remind you of uh, the website, reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, you can go snag your free uh, 31-page PDF of the top 200 drugs. So uh, definitely a, a resource that I put together based upon uh, my experiences of taking pharmacology exams, board exams, and uh, help highlight really important clinical practice pearls as well as um, pharmacology pearls or things you might be tested on uh, throughout your career or in taking board exams. So uh, go snag that for free uh, simply for uh, signing up to follow the podcast. All right, so let's get into the drug of the day today, and that is sildenafil. Uh, very uh, common, joked about, uh, whatever the case may be, uh, drug. Um, Viagra is the brand name of, of this medication. Uh, but there is also uh, Rivadio, which is a, um, a same drug, sildenafil, but it goes under the, that brand name. And it can be used for pulmonary arterial hypertension. So uh, that is something I have seen in, in clinical practice a, a few times. I would say it's not incredibly common. But if you see somebody taking uh, sildenafil, usually it's, it's 20 milligrams three times a day as far as the standard dosing. Uh, they are likely not taking that uh, for the most commonly used indication of erectile dysfunction. Okay, so I'm not going to talk a ton about uh, pulmonary arter arterial hypertension. Um, but I do want you to, to be aware if you see, hey, what the heck is this, sildenafil three times a day, uh, that might be the, the indication there that it's being used for. Or at least that's the most common I've seen when you see a dose like that. All right, so dosing for erectile dysfunction. Uh, this is typically uh, going to be in the range of 25 to 100 milligrams. And remember... Uh, mechanistically how this drug works. Uh, it is classified as a PDE5 inhibitor. What the heck is a PDE5 inhibitor? PDE stands for phosphodiesterase, which anything that ends in esterase is typically some sort of uh, enzyme that, that breaks down something in the body. And indeed, that's true in, in this case. So mechanistically, um, sildenafil... Um, increases uh, reactivity to sexual stimulation, and by inhibiting PDE5 or phosphodiesterase 5, it helps prevent the breakdown of cyclic GMP, and this ultimately leads to smooth muscle relaxation and increased uh, blood flow as an erection is occurring. So that's how the drug helps with erectile dysfunction. Now, when I hear uh, smooth muscle relaxation, I also think of uh, the vessels, and that helps me remember the adverse effect profile. So relaxing smooth muscle, that's something you hear of talked about when we're talking about antihypertensive drugs. And indeed, that effect can potentially cause a lower blood pressure with the use of this drug. And if I recall the history correctly, I believe this drug, sildenafil, was originally um, being studied uh, for use in hypertension. Um, like I said, I mentioned the, the indication, pulmonary arterial hypertension, um, so we can surmise that it's, it's going to lower blood pressure. And it can do it too much in patients that may 
um, already be on multiple antihypertensives or maybe they have a kind of a borderline low blood pressure already. So we definitely need to pay attention to that. Uh, my patient population that I primarily work with is older patients. Uh, so as that patient ages, and if we're using sildenafil in that older patient, uh, they may be a little bit more susceptible uh, to some of those orthostatic blood pressure changes and, and drop in blood pressure. So uh, important to keep tabs on that, important to educate uh, patients about dizziness, symptoms of low blood pressure uh, when we're, we're talking about this drug. Other adverse effects, um, flushing, headache, uh, possibly GI upset, so kind of some uh, nuisance type type adverse effects. Obviously, if these are severe, uh, the patient's probably not going to take it again, and we're probably not going to advise them to take it again either. Now, rare adverse effects. This is an interesting one. Um, sildenafil has been associated um, with some visual changes. So uh, alteration in color, which is definitely a, a un unique um, adverse effect there. Uh, so important to, I think, alert patients that if they notice any visual changes, uh, definitely report that right away and obviously uh, stop, stop taking the drug until it can be uh, assessed as to, to what's exactly going on. Uh, another rare one that, that has been reported uh, preopism, so that's an erection uh, lasting longer than four hours is typically how that's defined. So again, educate your patients, say, hey, you know, let, let us know if, if this happens um, and uh, we'll adjust and uh, likely stop the, the drug if it's going to, to be an issue. So from a monitoring perspective, um, by and large, the most important thing that you're going to monitor is uh, blood pressure. And I would say that uh, has a heightened, uh, you need to, to, to have a heightened attention to patients that may be at risk for um, falls or, you know, have that higher risk of low blood pressure due to, to other medications potentially. So let's take a uh, quick break right now and we will uh, discuss drug interactions and I wanted to um, discuss blood pressure a little bit more uh, in relation to those um, drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like pharmacotherapy, ambulatory care, medication therapy management, or geriatric certification, definitely go check out meded101.com for useful study materials. In addition, if you're not a pharmacist, or if you are a pharmacist, uh, we've got lists of other resources, Amazon books, Audible books, full of practice pearls and clinical medication management tips. So definitely go check that out, uh, support the sponsor, and, and help keep this uh, podcast free and available for all to enjoy. So all those resources can be found at meded101.com slash store. So finishing up on drug interactions, uh, the one that I've seen in clinical practice, the one that's most uh, discussed, the one that's most tested on uh, throughout my career uh, is definitely with nitrates. So uh, we've, we've got to remember that it is contraindicated to use uh, any type of, of nitrate product. So that's uh, isosorbide mononitrate, um, nitroglycerin patches, um, sublingual nitrogen, or uh, excuse me, nitroglycerin, and um, we need to have that separation. Sildenafil, it's recommended at least uh, 24 hours of, of separation. Uh, this can be a little tricky to navigate. Uh, you may have a patient that has had angina. Maybe they take you know, one sublingual nitrogen a year on average. Uh, so that gets a, a, a little bit challenging where you've got to uh, trust the patient as well as educate that patient to say, hey, if you happen to have an, an angino episode and you're taking nitroglycerin for it uh, or you start a, a new uh, chronic therapy on nitroglycerin, you've got to stop this drug or at least come back and assess it with us. 
and, and make sure, hey, that, that we're not taking uh, this together because that significant uh, syncope, drop in blood pressure tr- type uh, reaction can, can definitely um, cause some, some problems and, and issues there. Another class specifically with the blood pressure issue I wanted to mention uh, were alpha blockers. Uh, so I, I don't believe this is a true contraindication, um, but alpha blockers are, are definitely notorious for uh, that syncope uh, drop in, in blood pressure type symptom and adding in the sildenafil to a patient taking uh, this medication could really exacerbate that further. So definitely something to, to keep out for. Um, in managing that situation, you might um, not want them to go on a, a PDE5 inhibitor like sildenafil. Um, you may be more cautious. Maybe you start at a lower dose of the sildenafil if they're taking, obviously, the, the alpha blocker on a regular basis, basis which is uh, most often the case. Um, so really, those are a couple strategies to, to pay attention to it. And then, of course, educating the patient to say, hey, this, this can happen um, with uh, the combination of these drugs. Uh, other blood pressure medications, alcohol, um, they may you know, have that additive type effect of dropping blood pressure. So um, when patients are, are first using it, getting used to it, um, or we're maybe increasing the dose, we got to be a little bit more uh, careful in, in some of those situations. 3A4 inhibitors can possibly increase the concentrations of sildenafil. Um, I wouldn't you know, say it's an absolute contraindication or anything, um, but I think it, it is uh, something to be aware of if patients are reporting more dizziness, more lightheadedness, um, you know, signs of, of that low blood pressure um, in association with maybe a new medication that they started. So, you know, classic uh, 3A4 interacting meds or inhibitors, I think of uh, the azole antifungals, I think of something like grapefruit juice. Uh, so those are a couple of examples there. And then one last point I, I did want to make is when you see an order for a drug like sildenafil for erectile dysfunction, take the time and go through the patient's medications. Oftentimes, medications can cause sexual dysfunctions or or exacerbate sexual dysfunction. So really, really important to to take a peek at that. So uh, many common medications can contribute or cause sexual dysfunction. I think of uh, many antidepressants, you know, the the TCAs, the SSRIs, um, BPH medications like finasteride, Uh, beta blockers, uh, diuretics are another couple of of notorious medications as well. So uh, definitely think about that when you see a new order or you see a patient uh, reporting these new symptoms uh, of sexual dysfunction or erectile dysfunction um, to assess that medication list and make sure we aren't doing more harm than than good with, with medications. So Uh, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you picked up a a few pearls here. Uh, If you enjoyed the podcast, definitely leave us a rating review on iTunes. That's greatly appreciated. Uh, Support the sponsor, meded101.com slash store. And uh, I'm going to sign off for today. You can track me down on LinkedIn. That's probably the best social media platform and and connect with me there. Uh, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP. So signing off for today. Thanks so much for listening. Take care and have a great rest of your day. It is Ryan here and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper? A woohooer, a hand clap, or a high fiver. I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, avoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.